Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so we'll quickly introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sri Manjari and I am from Italy. I um, have been um, practicing and teaching yoga uh, in the last, let's say, seven years. And um, I am a massage therapist and also I do at the moment session, I'm focusing on helping women to mm -hmm. uh, release tension and stress from their bodies, physically and emotionally, uh, through um, emotional healing, energy healing, and um, also with essential oil and also with physical, some practical also steps from the yoga and exercises. So um, I'm very grateful, very happy to be here speaking today about emotions and um, how to manage different moods of the day. So we're here in this um, doTERRA education. So I will mainly speak about how we can um, understand this beautiful world of emotions and understand how our, how our body reacts to it, how we uh, they affect us on a very physical level, on a mental level, and also uh, how they can also help us to ele elevate ourselves on the spiritual platform. And mainly, I will also speak about how aromatherapy helps us in this process and how we can best um, learn more tools to keep ourselves healthy and learn how to navigate through this beautiful world of emotions. So I will also share my screen um, so I can guide you through the presentation. Um, okay. Okay, so. Here it is. So emotional wellness and mood management. So what are emotions? So we will start speaking like basically what are this, um, like we are made of emotions, like our body, our life, our experiences are mainly how we feel about them. And uh, maybe a 10% of the time, actually how the reality is. So they really shape our life. They shape our beliefs that they um, pretty much are everything that is connected to our belief of what life is. And uh, let me put it here. So emotions are how individuals deal with matters or situations they find personally significant. So this is a very personal experience and we will see how. So like I was saying, they're generated from the body. So it's mainly on a physical platform where we can get these informations from our higher self. So from the soul, from our uh, consciousness and from the divine. So they can be a beautiful way of how we can communicate with ourself, with our real self and with the divine. So they can be really, really amazing messengers of that and the main two criteria are uh, that base on the emotion so on our experience are what we are experiencing in the present moment and this is um, the most important part actually that we want to um, really understand how we feel like right now you can also do a little bit like a check on yourself like have a deep breath and I love in people and really check with yourself how are you feeling right now and just feel your body connect a little bit with yourself with the breathing and the, the other criteria is the past experiences that are in our consciousness so many times we found ourselves in different places, in different moments in life where actually we are not really present. And what we are actually doing is just going through our own um, 
brainstorming about our past or the future. So this is also a little bit the mind that likes to go forward in the future or back in the past. And we will also um, check that. So let me see everybody is entered, okay. So, um, and the last part is, uh, how they manifest. Sorry, I'm just going to move. Yeah, anyway. How they manifest and um, the main um, way how energy manifests is actually through the emotions manifest on the first level is through vibration, is through energy. Maybe you've heard already that um, the physical quantum explains the that actually our consciousness um, and the matter are made of, of vibration. Mm -hmm. So everything is made of vibration. Like mm -hmm. when they uh, like have a microscope and check like matter with the microscope, you can see it, it goes down to small mo molecules. And these small molecules are actually stay together because of vibration, because of sound. Another point is thoughts so from sound from vibration they come through us thoughts and beliefs they that they form and then they become also physical so this is a wonderful process that we will try to also understand and uh, the last point that is um a very important point that we will also discuss we don't have today i will just put like one hour like 45 minutes and then we can have some questions so we will go through like basic um understandings of how they work you're free to write your question in the chat box so we can also address specific issue if you have um something you would like to talk more specifically about and um and yeah so okay and last point is the time of process that is extremely important and we will I will explain to you why to really have a healthy lifestyle is very important this time to process between the trauma or the event that happens to ultimately the action we will take. So in order to really center ourselves, we, we can't just see from our bodily platform, we can't just see it from the mind, but we, and also we can't just see it from a spiritual platform, we have to arrive to a point when we have like a global overlook and then we are really fully able to move forward. So next slide, okay. So another thing I would like you to think about is, um, I put this slide of universal human needs and, and there are mainly like nine physical, how the body is spiritual to nourish the essence within self-expression to really allow the creativity of, within us to, ex, to come out, how we nurture ourselves. So how we take care of, of literally like having like that me time, no, when you really are able to take care of, of what's around you and the relationships uh, purpose extremely important, interdependence, loving relationship, feeling part of a community, feeling part of family, autonomy, so that our freedom, mental stimulation, the ability to um, study, reflect, keep yourself mentally fresh, and celebration, so the ability to um, really find your um, the ability to express your joy, the ability to express what you actually love doing and celebrate life. So all of these are extremely important. And I'm sure um, just by reading it, you can already like see some points that actually they're not so great. Maybe in our life, we can already spot like, oh, maybe the physical, maybe I'm not so healthy or oh, maybe the celebration, maybe I'm not really finding that time to really celebrate myself or you can just see a little bit and just take a moment to yourself to really feel like what is it that I must accomplish at the moment maybe it's the purpose maybe it's the mental stimulation 
And also um, you can see what is maybe lacking more um, energy that you should invest a little bit more time. So you can put from one to 10 in, uh, if you have paper or in your mind, and that will help you also to understand a little bit more what is the area that you uh, mostly need um, right now to take care of. So you can, you can just take a moment to just go through them and, and a little bit try to feel what makes us feel more comfortable and what makes us feel maybe less comfortable. And once you do that, you can just take a deep breath. <laughs> and just, I would like you to also, you know, really be in this class and, and really like participate so you can um, have a better experience, understand more about yourself in this time together. So we can go to the next one. Yeah. So um, emotions and the body. So on a very, very... Um, scientific way emotions are just neurochemicals that are just going through the body so they're molecules they trigger peptides and and they just go through the the body giving different messages to how to react and how to um hold so there are some information that are going to be like let's react some information are going to be like oh let's Freeze, you know. Another, the most important that we will see is also some information will help us to go through the to the step of processing them in a healthy way. Now we go to the main uh, point of the three brains. So we have three parts of our body that are the best one that help us to process these emotions. So the first one is the mind. So we can see as soon as something happen or some events and we can see the mind immediately try to try to analyze and actually 90 percent of our behavior is through um, the analytical mind so through our subconsciousness 90 percent of what we do is actually affected by our subconsciousness it's not really us acting in that moment but it's actually more a reaction of how we've been dealing in the past then we have the heart. So uh, in spirituality, in Vedic text, is also expressed that in the heart, there is the paramatma, there is the soul, and there is the super soul. So the, the self, who we really are, and also the divine reside within the heart. And is a beautiful place because that's what allows us to, to make, to slow down help us like to slow down and to and sometimes can also drag us down like the feeling of pain that's actually from the heart that comes sometimes like depression and feeling heavy but actually most of the time if you're really able to listen to the heart it can be a very beautiful uplifting experience and then we have the gut so and we all know what, I, what we are talking about because we can see sometimes it's not because of the food, not because of the activity. Sometimes we just have pain in our stomach and we're like, what's going on? Like, it's not going away. You're like drinking a lot of lemons and teas. And, but sometimes that is really stuck there. And um, that's very much connected to our, um, to the fact that we probably haven't processed the emotion. And this uh, connected to the chakras that we will speak a little bit more later is that we have the beautiful, so the, the seven chakras. So they start the, the main three uh, from the bottom till the stomach. And they are mainly affected by our physical existence. Then we have the three on the top. So we have the crown third eye and the throat. And these are more about subtle experiences and things that we um, are keeping a lot in our mind. And then in the middle of these two, you have the heart chakra where it's like, you know, it's like mostly when the heart chakra is flowing really nicely, it just brings them together, um, both the energy. So the physical and the spiritual or the subtle and it helps to, um, 
really make that shift and that transition it doesn't matter how heavy or how hard traumas or life experiences are so it's very important that in whatever area we will work then ultimately we want to bring it centering it to the heart so another point is um, a practical point okay let's say um, you know down we have life experience so something happens we receive a bad call or we get bitten by some animals or we get um, break up or relationships and then there is a the time of processing and then the reaction happens and that creates a belief so I want you to see between the life experience the processing and the reaction what are what is the part of this tree that actually we can have control of I want you to a little bit look at it and just feel a little bit like what is the part where I can really make an impact. So the life experiences, of, as we know, you know, things happen as much as you can be uh, positive and have all good intentions in life. Sometimes really bad things happen. And then reactions many times, 90% of the time, we're just reacting from our subconscious mind. So what allow us to actually stay in that 10% but we actually not reacting because of our past is the time of processing. How much time have we had in our life or according to that trauma, how much time have we given to that event to process it and to really understand it? Because what we want to understand is that the more we really embrace a uh, ourselves and we commit to look at all these heavy experiences in life the more we can uh, transform our life because from bad experiences actually bad beliefs come about ourselves about life about god and if we don't give ourselves that time to fully process it and understand oh, actually that was something that happened in my life this is not really my life it's just a moment. It was just like a day or a moment in my life that I had a bad experience. It's not my life, but we keep dragging, thinking about that little experience over and over and over again. And actually it seems like life is terrible. And it's actually just because we created that belief at that moment. So what I uh, do as a therapist I help especially women to go through this processing time uh, by giving an energetical support that's always very good to work on the saddle because that's where things come first and then um, to really understand what's the belief how do I want what, how am I choosing to live my life am I choosing every single day to live according to my old belief or am I able to really open my heart, open myself to a happy life, to a real life? Because we don't want to just change the belief in a random way, like, oh, I will never get hurt, or I am like a superwoman, or, you know, we don't want to um, develop like these like affirmations that are just so much higher you know but we want to really heal that part so maybe the belief was like I'm not good enough you know life is not fair and really understand actually there was a moment life is beautiful life is part of me I am a part of of the supreme and and really create that it's not even creating but it is allowing that purity that is already within us that beauty that love that is already within us to manifest. So you want to do like, not from outside in, but from inside out. So we will also explore that. We don't have so much time. I also want to speak about giving you tools for different emotions. So I need to be a little careful how to uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna uh, address 
the science behind aromatherapy because it's really beautiful how um, they, it can really help and assist us in this process of really understanding ourselves and really moving forward in life. So how, um, um, how does um, essential oil works? So when you have like a floral aroma, when you have, you know, like if you have oils right now, you can just maybe pick one with have lavender next to me. Just give it a little sniff and you can see like immediately just by like inhaling something that is so sweet and so refreshing and so calming immediately like something happened in the brain because the information from the nose goes straight to um, the limbic system where you have the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland that they will send information to the cells and it will go straight to the heart it will go straight to my favorite organ that is the liver and that's where they will start to get processed and of course it will give information to the gut and then the whole physical problems start to happen and we will get <laughs> get into that it's quite fascinating actually the first time i started studying this i was um I started getting fascinated by it. I was probably 14. So like 12 years ago, I was completely, um, because my uncle, he is a, a therapist of um, Chinese medicine and, and he really knows a lot of how uh, emotions are connected to uh, different organs. So when people come to him like with a broken arm, he's like, oh, actually you have a problem in your, uh, liver or something or in the intestine it's, it's really amazing how the whole body is actually so connected with internal organs and you can also through reflexology really see and massage just massaging the feet you can actually massage the whole internal organs so it's, it's really fascinating so I started that um, quite some time ago to get fascinated and then study it and um, it's absolutely amazing the the feedback I received and my personal experience, because you can really, really heal just through um, having bigger understanding of how your body works. It's not that now everyone has to study it, but it's good to have a person that can help you at least understand how you are, how your body is made, and in this way, um, use proper tools. And if you need any help, I'm also happy to if you're registered either with me or any um, doTERRA uh, consulate in our team, you can uh, let me know and I'm happy to um, help you for free to understand also which oil actually they are good for you and for the situation you are going through. Because um, yeah, aromatherapy is incredible. It has been used for, from a very long time time immemorial let's say because I mean through science we don't know so much but through the spiritual scripture we can understand that um, even 5,000 years ago there was the people were using essence and oils to to refresh themselves and and just in the 20th, 20th century um, the scientific community started to recognize oh actually this can be used as a um, therapy <laughs> so it's quite funny but yeah anything in nature anything in nature can be used as a therapy if of course one really understands and knows how to use it so go to the next one okay so the cycle so I want you to think also a little bit about yourself now you can again connect to yourself and try to see what um okay so I will also explain to you that what is the first um, moment when um, stress comes? Like you, you can think a little bit and, and think, okay, like when I feel stressed, usually what is the main reason that I get some stress? And I've been thinking again today also just my own self, you know, just I like to think about life <laughs> and these things. And I was really, really meditating, you know, how 
um, why stress? Like, where, where is it coming from in my life? And then I was also reading that it is actually coming from an unfulfilled desire. So stress comes just because we have desire, just because things didn't go the way we wanted to. So, of course, what do we want? We want to be happy. And um, this is the story of our life, just trying to be happy. And we can see many times it doesn't work because um, we live in a world that is heavy and it's not supposed to um, make us happy, actually, in a material platform, but it's supposed to help us to realize who we really are. So um, saying this, um, stress comes, things don't go the way we want. And so when, when something doesn't go the way you want, what is the first emotion that like comes from this stress? It's actually anger. So anger is the first emotion that comes and doesn't have, especially when we were children, we can see some some people were manifesting more anger maybe other people were not manifesting so much anger but um that's when problems start to happen in the first five years that's actually the time we create our own belief about life and if many things didn't go our way or if we had many desire and many um things that were not really fulfilled especially emotionally maybe our parents were not available maybe we really felt rejected by our families then there is really that sense of frustration and anger like oh you know this world doesn't love me I'm not really worth of staying here of living here so here we have um, a beautiful cycle. So the first organ that get affect, gets affected is the liver. So the liver, because the, the job of the liver is to um, a detox, is to uh, let go of the information that are toxic and actually give, give the good information to the body that keeps us healthy, keep, uh, keeps us thriving. So the liver is the first one so that's probably every one of us having something to do with our liver maybe some somebody knows some people know some people don't know because it's very subtle but that's actually the first organ where it starts to create some some uh, informations and then um, it goes to the heart so through the blood vessel to the heart and small intestine and here is when we start to develop like hate, like the world doesn't love me. I am not word of love. I am rejected. You know, the, the hate start to come and, and people may have um, blood, high blood pressure, chest pain, uh, heavy palpitations. Then we have um, spleen and stomach uh, pancreas. This is already um, when uh, things become very, very anxious. We feel we have the whole world on our shoulder. Like we became so much frustrated within ourselves that actually we, we wanted to, we still wanted so much to have life our own way. And we went for like a huge uh, feeling of having to be responsible for everything and really stressing out. And then um, another way is through, um, then, then we can see in that um, part uh, that things may still not work out. So one becomes really much affecting the lungs and in the large intestine. And that's where uh, depression, sadness, uh, feeling unaccomplished, feeling like weak, feeling um, heavy feelings come and they create serious damage to the lungs. And also that's why many people smoke because it's like helps to kind of get trying, to, you know, still trying to get rid of something that um, actually has to go a little bit backward and really uh, take time to see uh, what was my, my desire that was not fulfilled. And then the last was um, kidney and bladder, and um, yeah, this is when it really hits the fear. So that's when 
when something happens, actually we freeze instead of <laughs> dealing with the, the processing. And actually there is fear, there is um, uh, a lot of contraction. And we can see some people when they grow older, also, you know, the shoulders, like they start to become very curved and it's also because of the kidneys and, um, yeah, this is this is very important. So these are, of course, general. Some people may go more in one direction than another, maybe. But still, this is mainly the cycle. Some people may stay more into that, you know, keeping in the heart or keeping in the stomach. Still, emotion really get processed on a physical level um, through these organs and um, and. Uh, kidney and bladder and also is connected to also the um, um, ovaries and genitals and like that. So next one. Um, okay, so let's speak a little bit of, about basic oils that can help us in aromatherapy. So doTERRA has a beautiful um, has a beautiful way to um, help us in this process because they created beautiful um, uh, blends. So my favorite is Serenity. So on the left, you can see um, Serenity help us to really calm down, to really um, relax. So the best way is to put it under the feet before going to sleep. Or if you ask somebody can, can massage it on our spine, it's really, really beautiful and calming especially if people struggle to sleep, especially if one feels very, very tired at, at the end of the day. Then we have Citrus Bliss is, um, is beautiful to um, motivate ourselves. I also use um, actually a blend that is called Motivate. I will also show later. Uh, Dotara has also like a package of six oils that you can buy at a discounted pre uh, price. And it has all uh, different oils for the emotions. And Motivate is my favorite, but also Citrus Bliss is very wonderful because it's also more sweet. Then uh, we have Elevation. Elevation, they also describe it like the sun in a bottle. It's really, it's really wonderful. Um, it has inside one of my, um, it's like lavender and um, clary sage, sandalwood, cinnamon. There's actually quite a lot of melissa, quite a lot of oils inside. And they really, really uplift the mood when one feels like down, feels, um, discouraged from life. And then we have balance that is very grounding. I also like to use cedarwood for grounding myself. And um, cedarwood helps very much to also ground in a sense of relating to people. You know, sometimes we, we may feel um, very much burdened by other people or other people's emotions and energies and so there would help us to remain centered just really connect heart to heart and balance is also wonderful because it has is a blend of many different oils um, that uh, help us to really reconnect uh, with earth so this is a little bit it. So how to use them? Um, there, there are three main ways um, that are very effective. So it's through um, the aromatic way. So putting it in the, into the diffuser um, because it's always good to, um, especially when you're working, I find it very helpful when you're working from home or you are uh, have to concentrate. I like to use my diffuser in this moment but you can use it anytime and you can always, um, it's good to always also have like a bottle of water <laughs> next to it so you can always fill it up and have the oils that you like the most. I, I always keep them there. So I know like, you know, a little bit like becoming a scientist trying to make the best blend for yourself. And then you can use it topically so you can apply them on your body. This is the, my favorite part because I actually have them uh, in the bathroom because 
um, is good, you know, after you take a shower, there are actually oils you can apply on different chakras. And you can also, when you have like your own blends, you can use them for the problems that you actually need more um, awareness, need to deal with. So it's always good to have uh, that and apply them like after shower. So the body is still warm and can absorb them even faster. And internally, uh, the Tara has many, all these, not all of them, but many oils uh, the Tara has, you can take them internally and they can help you for the immune system, for um, regenerating the cells, for uh, digestion, for um, pretty much everything, like <laughs> for sleep, for painkillers. Um, and I will show you later my favorites on um, also to take internally a little bit about the chakras. So um, I'm going over time, <laughs> but we will do it. Okay, so uh, chakras and emotion. What are the chakras? I'm sure all of you have heard of them. So they help us, they, they are energetical centers they are uh, connected to seven parts of the, the body, but actually there are many more in more uh, elaborated parts. So, um, but the main one are seven and um, every oil of the Terra that I checked also with my friend, Jana, where she started uh, to check them actually on energetical level. And then she, I was really impressed because um, She's also a wonderful healer. And, uh, and I was very impressed because um, they actually do um, in, uh, they actually do work so well and so um, quickly on the subtle body. And I used to have essential oils before, but I was never um, fully satisfied. It was always like, how chemical is it? And, and here we really go safe. It's really, it's really wonderful. So the Tara has this, um, okay. The Tara has this oils and um, emotion package they create, they, they created. So they have console, peace, forgive, cheer, motivate, and I have to move things that I can't see and passion. So these ones are, um, the main one so you they put them connected to the chakras but actually the way how we apply them it depends because for example my favorite is peace because um it it's actually really the blend is beautiful as it helps grounding so when the mind when too many things are happening in life it's really wonderful to just ground yourself and i always apply it under my feet so when you need like to more ground yourself, it's always good to really use, um, really use um, like peace or um, yeah, that's the main one. And then um, console, the first one is, um, yeah, we will, ex I will explain them like this, Do I have them here. So you can also take in every slide, you can take screenshot. And if you want, I can also share with you um, any slide that you liked, you can just write to me. Um, so we have here um, console, the first one. So it's really wonderful for the seven chakra. So when you're working with um, heavy motion, the second, the, the seventh chakra, so the crown, it, becomes closed when one um, has like a heavy trauma or has really, really bad uh, thoughts and becomes very depressive. When the seven chakra closed, it means that the person is probably going through depression. It's really um, heavy to have it closed because it also means you're sucking the negative energy from your environment. So it's always important to keep it open. For that, actually, I use more um, frankincense. It's like really wonderful for all the chakra, like to balance the whole system. You can take it internally, you can take it, um, just also just put it on the head. And um, 
So console is also very good. It has frankincense, patchouli, lang lang, and others. And um, it's, it's very floral, it's very beautiful. Then peas, it's more grounding. Vetiver uh, is one of the main oils inside and it's really, really, really grounding. It's really beautiful and you can use it under the feet. That's where I, or you can also apply it on the third eye. And usually uh, we can see, you know, in, in a few words, the sixth chakra closes when we have too much, we are too much absorbed in what's going on in our own mind. Like we are literally not seeing, you know, like people can actually move a hand in front of you and you're like totally can't see it. Like you're so much in your own mind. And uh, so that helps. And uh, when it's unlocked, of course, it brings like a clear vision. It helps you to be in the present moment, see things as they are, you know, just be there and also helps you to have a vision of your life. So when you're really thinking about your life and the vision you have the intuition, peace is a wonderful blend to have. Then we have um, motivate that is more for the second chakra. So motivate is wonderful for allowing the creativity, the energy within us to like flow more freely to, um, you know, so it's when it's closed, the second chakra is really heavy on, we feel like, um like stagnant like like a pond you know like like water is not flowing it's just there it's just stuck is like maybe many ideas many minerals are in this pond and many um informations many things we would like to do even nice things but we feel like stuck we feel like you know can't really enjoy what we are doing you know everything just becomes just elements you know just there so it's it's really good to um take a look at it and use motivate to inspire yourself to actually do what you're doing with a little bit more energy a little bit more passion to it then cheer is connected with the third chakra solar plexus and um, that is very much so solar plexus is like especially in people living in a city. <laughs> I've been in, to Berlin last week and it's like everybody just has a very a stressed third chakra because you're always doing something. You're always thinking about what you're going to do next, what you're going to achieve next. What about how people uh, feel about your personality, how, how you are presenting yourself in the world. Like it's all about like action and doing and it gets, really stuck when we are disconnected like from our heart actually actually all of the chakra get disconnected when the heart is really not flowing but um in this case it's more connected on identity and achievements and um so cheer is beautiful wild orange is the main one then there is lemon clove ginger um lemon is very good actually if you have lemon you can always use lemon for, for that when it gets, you know, like we were speaking at the start about the gut and the stomach becomes like closed. You can always use the essential oils because it's really a deep concentrate of, of um, the fruits. And um, yeah, this is, this is the main. Anytime you can send questions. So you can already start writing them if you like, and we can address them later. So passion, then we have passion at the first chakra. So the root is, um, is very, very um, important, especially if you practice spiritual life, because um, many people tend to focus so much on vision and connecting to the divine and feeling all that bliss. But actually, if the first chakra is not open, that means that whatever we are doing, we are not fully um, living it and we're not fully able to embrace it with our full self. And it's extremely important because if we don't feel, if we feel all these beautiful experiences we are having, they kind of, they're not 
really much connected to ourselves, the person that we are, then it becomes really difficult. Like you can have a wonderful day. I have many people. Uh, sometimes I see they're like happy and they have a you know great time, but then um, they're always looking for the happiness. Like you're always looking for something because that first chakra is blocked. So you're not actually there. You're never feeling nourished from the things you're doing. You're never feeling um, fully fulfilled from it. You're always looking for more. So when the first chakra is, is uh, healthy, you feel really nourished. You feel like even just watching the sunset, even just watching um, flower, you can already feel satisfied because of course you can connect it to the heart, but you can already like you immediately feel nourished and passion really helps for that. Cardamom is the main, one of the main, and it really, it's a really beautiful, like spices, they help us to ground. So that's why it's also very nice to cook Ayurvedic food because um, it gives that um, ability to ground ourselves, to help uh, the food to get the nourishment. And that's why spices are so important. Then forgive the heart chakra. <laughs> so this is the most beautiful um, in a sense that we really are there. <laughs> we really are situated as a soul, as a consciousness. We're really situated in the center of our chest. And, um, and they call it also forgive because um, it's, it's, it's the most um, wonderful ability of our heart actually to forgive to set other free, to set ourselves free. And to set ourselves and others free means that we are really able to let go of all these desires and expectations. And the blend is um, black spruce, bergamot, juniper. It, it's very, um, very earthy, but also um, uh, with, trees and raisins from trees like we can see you know when when you go in in nature you go in a forest it's much easier to like breathe and and feel yourself there and feel the beauty of life you know beaming all around you and birds and and so this uh, blend especially mirror and ber bergamot is wonderful it's a wonderful blend i recommend you um so much because um it also helps the metabolism of the body so to keep keep the but the energy flowing in the body and um my favorite for the heart chakra is also geranium <laughs> geranium is wonderful because it helps to it's called the heart healer it helps to heal broken hearts so if you had like bad relationship or you had a fight with your partner or you feel lonely, geranium is wonderful. And also lang lang, I have it somewhere else, but also lang lang, it also helps to connect us with the inner child. So a little bit of that, let's go ahead. Um, so now I wanted to also advise you share with you a little bit the best blend like if you really are a person that has a lot of stress and can't really sleep properly there is a beautiful blend that you can do to yourself or if you know me I can also make it for you <laughs> and uh, it's frankincense vetiver bergamot and chamomile like this is really wonderful because it really goes into the grounding it goes into uh, allowing the heart to calm down and chamomile is also very, very soothing because it helps also the mind to calm down. So this is a beautiful blend if you feel you are struggling to fall asleep and you know having problems with that and, and sleeping. I also recommend you so much, maybe you heard already, uh, melatonin, to take melatonin before going to sleep because melatonin is... Um, hormone that works at night so if you're not um if you're not able to you know really 
uh, relax yourself. Melatonin won't work and it only works at night in the dark. So it means if it's like after 10 and you're still awake with lights on and phone in front of yourself, it means probably your melatonin is not working properly because that's actually the time from nine till 12. That's when the melatonin start to get into the body. So if you're still under artificial lights, much probably you will have problems. And also that helps to, to have good circulation in the body, helps for many, many things, especially for women also, if they have period cramps, that also helps wonderfully. And then, okay, so then we have oils and supplements. My favorite supplements, the Terra has this beautiful, um serious um we don't have them in europe actually the adaptive and the copaiba sub gels we only have the serenity but if you live in america or uh, in other parts you will also find these other two but also the oil works fine the oil is amazing adaptive is my favorite so adaptive you want to use it when you are um traveling or you are uh, you know, there are this period of life where you feel like you're in transition. You're not really somewhere else, but at the same time, you don't really feel like you're here and or the job is kind of changing or, you know, there are experiences in life that feel a little bit difficult to deal with. And then adaptive is wonderful. You can apply it on the stomach. You can smell it. I always keep it with me, especially when I'm traveling or I am um, doing different things and I'm lacking that confidence or that clarity. It's really, it's really a wonderful blend, works on all the seven chakras, works on many, many emotions. Then we have Copaiba. I used to use it. Um, I still use it very much as um, a support when I have physical pain. So especially for, you know, as women having, if you have cramps uh, during period, you can apply copaiba under the feet, you can take it internally in the soft gels. And it's really, really soothing. Copaiba is um, coming from the marijuana plant, but is um, um, without the, uh, component that it makes you intoxicated and I don't remember the name but um, so it's very safe to take it's nothing uh, <laughs> that is um, stimulating too much actually is really soft and it's really uh, calming the nervous system it's also very good to take if you had like for example panic attack or really had a situation that shaked you physically it's really, really wonderful. And then serenity is a uh, beautiful when um, especially the, the mind is not able to come down. So it's full of lavender and all these floral, beautiful aromas that help us to stay um, calm and centered. So last one, I think so. Oh, almost. Okay, so last one is a, just a little chart. You can also take a screenshot, it's beautiful because it gives us some direction of um, different um, emotions. So you can see, you know, when you feel a specific emotion, like when it's, we just spoke about this, I want to say it again, but you can really, you know, see also have it as a chart. You can look at it and, and see a little bit what, if you need something more floral, you need something more spicy or herbs and so you can um, use it for yourself. So, and then um, this is just a general overview that um, can help us to understand how to keep ourselves healthy. So uh, the main thing that we want to do is to have really fresh food so our diet must be very healthy very fresh exercise extremely important I used to exercise a lot um, 
I was actually an athlete and a full-time dancer quite some years ago, like five years ago. And it feels like a long time ago because this last, especially couple of years, I've been mainly into yoga, but I haven't been really exercising. And that's actually uh, what you need if you um, have toxins in the body, if you want to like, you know, help the liver to release all these toxins. Then um, stress, manage stress. So I shared with you some tools about it and reduce toxins. So reduce anything that is toxic, starting from food, going all the way to people, going all the way to beliefs about yourself. And uh, of course, you also want to take it very much in consideration, um, whoever therapist or person you're seeing for uh, keeping yourself healthy and uh, proactive medical care. So you can always, um, you know, take good advices from good doctors that are um, also in the Western medicine, but it's hopefully they're also more aware of the whole and not just the, the small uh, part that needs attention. So you can also um, think what, what is that you and your family needs the most to um, have a more healthy experience. So it's a good time to think. <laughs> right now is a good time to um, see it, think about yourself, about your life and, and what is that you need to make a shift Maybe it's just externally, maybe um, it's just um, having to move more and having to uh, do more exercise, or maybe it's more about your beliefs. And yeah, I wish you all the best to find out. <laughs> so you can write to me anytime. Um, if you like, I can share with you my email if you don't know me otherwise um you can write to me you can contact maya maya mangala if you have um any question about this class or you can write them in the chat box so if you would like to know anything you can ask me now otherwise i will close <laughs> Okay, so everybody seems happy and satisfied. Very, very happy to all of you that you're here, that you join, you spend your Saturday afternoon with me. Very happy to have seen you. I can see Sophia and Elsa. <laughs> and okay, somebody wrote something. Thank you. Thank you, Manji Krishna. Happy. Carlos, gratitude for this class. And all you shared aloud, I'm very, very happy to hear. Carlos, you can, you know, feel free. You have also Sophia, I think, right? <laughs> that you're really in touch with. And yeah, Sophia is really wonderful. She knows also so many things. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, this beautiful set. Thank you, Sophia. You're always so kind. <laughs> Okay, so if everyone is good, I will close it here. I'm sorry you went a little bit over time. Yeah, but um, yeah, I hope you got the, the essence from it. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to hear from you and I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.